Good evening and welcome to the Hempy Hour. I will be one of your hosts, Gina Mama Epps. And Lois Carter. And together we are your favorite Hemp Sisters over at the Hemp Sisters Nation. Mm -hmm. Happy 420. Happy 420. We actually both have a post today about 420. Yeah. So you guys got to check it out. There's a little history behind it, not just, you know, smoking weed and getting nuts. Yeah, I would put a little bit, uh, a little myth busting in there uh, right. about the origin. Right. And also in those posts, you can actually find a link to subscribe to yeah. our newsletters, our blogs, our blogs, et cetera. Yes. And you get a free gift. What kind of a free gift? An ebook. The gift for of your learning. educational pleasure. The gift of learning. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> me too. we're so silly. Today's show, we talk to our girl, Queen O Compliance. Yes. Jessica. All right. I was All right. Arendt. I, I knew I'd mess that up. Yeah. Uh, Jessica has been in the industry, God, got to be close to 10 years. Yeah. Um, but her heart and soul lies in compliance and doing things the right way. And um, we love her for that, you yeah. know, and then not everybody wants to be told what to do and how to do it. But if you want to stay in this industry and keep your business afloat, you're you, going to plan for it. You best believe that's the only road. Yeah, it really is. So, I'm looking forward to talking to her because, you know, like on a different kind of level, you know, we always talk. Yeah, we talk, a, we talk a lot of business and, you know, very yeah. little personal. So it'll be nice to just kind of kick back and have a really good yeah, conversation. Really dive in like the roots of how, where she was and why she came into here and, you know, right. all that experience from those particular types of failures and, you know, trying things out and hitting and missing. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So without sure. further ado, we would like to introduce you to Jessica and she's going to tell us a little bit about how she got started in the industry. Yes, let's bring her on. Bring her on down. <laughs> I'm a vegan to talk about today. Do you have, do you have anything that you want to make sure we don't miss, like any projects or anything like that? I want to talk about what you do so you could, you know, promote you. But we're real fucking casual around here. I don't know if you've watched any of our shit. <laughs> yeah, and you know, like, we want to kind of look like this with just more questions. <laughs> Like compliance and stuff, but yeah. you know, I mean, we didn't know if you offered like as a consultation service. Like, could someone? Yeah, share I you? do. So I consult in compliance. Um, so really, and that that's because so you know we come into this industry everybody from a very different corner. Right. I was the the a stereotypical privileged socialite. Yeah. Okay. And it's the privileged white girl that everybody talks about. Um, <laughs> so, and so I came from an environment where, first of all, I was told that if I French kissed the boy, I was going to get pregnant, right? And that, chlamydia. Yeah, yeah, and chlamydia. That know. weird environment. That's true. She got a certificate. That was, so that was my, mo my mother. But my grandmother, she was born in 1913, and she came of age through the 20s, just before the war in Germany. And she met my grandfather by deciding that he was really good looking so she literally stalked him bar to bar to bar so so my grandmother would say to me your mother like they were married 25 years my jewish grandmother your, your mother married your father as a virgin mazel tov 25 <laughs> years later yeah. she's still a virgin don't be a virgin which basically translated <laughs> into listen and it was sage advice that and never make eye contact when eating a banana. And it was <laughs> <laughs> solid advice. That's solid like, advice. What? Don't even <laughs> she was amazing, okay. right? This was a woman that kept her humor through concentration camps and poverty in Shanghai and coming into the States and not speaking the language. She was a survivor. She taught me to survive. So I've been all about get the hell out of my way because I got this life. But I came for privilege. My parents had made a good living. And about the time that they got to me, the third child in, they were like, we'll be having none of this drug stuff. Okay. My sister was the biggest coke addict there was on the planet. So much so she had a hole. She bored a hole, right? So my parents were like, we're not going to have the nuns at the private school call us about the Jewish kid. Not this time around. Okay. Doing the blow. So you're, you're going to go to boarding school because... Because you smell like that funny plant. We don't like that plant. Okay. You got to go to boarding school. They literally tried to isolate me, beat it out of me, shame me. I mean, I mean to tell you, 
every step of the way of my adult life has been you smoke that wacky tobacco you're never gonna get anywhere okay you're never gonna get anywhere because you smoke that plant okay my parents gave up at some point yeah a long time you know what i mean like wow what ended up happening ironically and this is how it all came to pass and why i live my life in so much joy and i'm like yeah let's talk about compliance let's do this let's do this okay (laughs) i've been the stigma yeah (laughs) i dropped out of high school had a kid out of wedlock and put it up for adoption i went two middle fingers up when my father said you go out that front door you are cut off and i was like okay i've got this never went home and asked for money i never ever asked for help i have worked two three four jobs at a time whatever the heck it took because i have that much pride (laughs) stupidly Left the ex-husband's like, keep your money because I hate you and I don't even want your dirty money. Now I'm like, 30 years later, I should have taken the money. But I I could have built a a cannabis business with that investment. So really, my life has been about a stigma, a constant stigma, because I openly said, I'm not taking the synthetic okay it's amazing my children weren't born without the stuff the synthetics and the doctors because i was like people have been doing this for thousands of years why do i need you that was always my mentality my kids came with almost no prenatal care i refused to go because i was listening to my body my body knows what it needs and so does that kid i'm so anti western medicine because my experience says every time somebody walks through your front door they come out with a little vial and it tells them they have to take that shit and then i watch that shit grow to another shit and another shit next thing you know my grandmother and my mother they're taking 25 bottles of god knows what right and every time i walked into a doctor's office somehow despite the fact that i felt completely healthy and normal just maybe i had an ache or pain right And then suddenly the protocol was I ended up in a surgery room or something horrific was happening or it was end of world, whatever. And I went, you know what? That can't, that can't be right. Like that just can't be right. So I've always prescribed to plant medicine. Mm -hmm. I'm sad. I smoke some pot. I don't feel good. I smoke some pot. Something hurts. I smoke some pot. You pissed me off and I have attitude problems and anger management. I smoke some pot. Okay. Yeah. And then I get back to this. So instinctively, I've always felt like God put this plant on the planet producing mm-hmm. all of this juice. It's the only plant that grows in every single climate on every single continent around the world producing this magic juice. And imagine that some extra oxygen. Does it, sound and, important? Does it sound important to me, Jessica? Yes, illegal. 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 <laughs> but, you, <laughs> but you think I'm supposed to take that synthetic shit you just came up with that's going to hook me so that I take more synthetic shit that's going to hook me. So I think, no, 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 no. And then there was a period of time when there was all that whole mental illness, Jessica needs help. And so they took me to therapy and they were like, here's some Paxil. You need to take 50 oh. milligrams of that. Do you know I took that Paxil for the length of six months? And then one morning I woke up because this is me and I went, I'm not taking this anymore. And I went off at cold turkey. Mm. I smoked cigarettes. One morning I woke up and went, I'm not doing this anymore. And I went cold turkey. I am really, man, this mind who I've learned in 53 years is very powerful. Yeah. You put your mind to something, you do it. Yeah. So you get well, to this stage, of, you know, going through and like, okay, this isn't working for me. And then right. knowing when to detach from the system, when are we asking the questions and where does right. that you? And it's, it's a part that a lot of people like to forget to do because they want to fit in with society. They're afraid of those. Right. Well, they're right. afraid of, no, they're afraid of the shaming of it, of having that question. Even if it's just a question, you're really just looking for an objective truth. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, <laughs> So I end up having, and I'm really quiet about my intake and kind of minding my own damn business. And we moved to Colorado, I'm completely happy because now I just get it any day of the week and it's not like a taboo thing. And then my mother ends up getting sick and my mom takes a fall. And this is the person that has spent my entire life shaming me for this, okay? And the diagnosis is stage four metastasized cancer and we've just finally gotten to the bones. By the way, it's in all your organs, your brain, your whole body, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the diagnosis came. She's holistic. So the diagnosis came because she fell down and her thigh bone shattered. 
And there she is at Banner Hospital in Arizona. And they're saying, you're never going to walk again. And here's your wheelchair. And you're going to go to the old people's rehab. And you're going to need to get your affairs in order. Oh, my God. And then I go to Arizona because I'm the dutiful daughter at the time. And I watch this doctor, no bigger than a minute, walk in as my mother's been there for a couple of weeks now. And she looks at my mother and she says, have you made a decision about the chemo? And my mother says, no. And the doctor looks at her and says, time is running out and chemo's big business. I swear to fucking God. Oh, my God. Oh, my, said, uh, my mother was at the time 72. 74, 75. And I said, um, I'm going to need your name, rank, and badge number now with a nice big smile, very sweet. And she said, I'm sorry. And I said, I need all your information. Mm -hmm. And then I called the hospital CEO and I said, this is what just happened and we'll be checking out today. Mm -hmm. So I convinced my parents to check her out, whatever. And they go to rehab. And about two weeks later, I go home because they don't like me and I don't like them. And I was just being beautiful. And about two weeks later, the phone rings and my father says, and I quote, you're the family pothead. I'm reading about this thing called RSO. Can huh. it help your mom? That's what I said. Huh. Yeah. Don't say. Interesting. <laughs> Thank say, you again for being such a rebel that you were. All those years back. Funny you should ask, because <laughs> I'm not in tequila anymore. And the truth yeah. is, this is what I'm doing for a living, and I'll be right there. And so I packed the car up with some Good daughter stuff. again. He's killing the daughter game. Yeah. And I, I really was. And I drive I 10 know. hours from Colorado to Arizona, and I say, let's start here. And I, I'm not taking the THC stuff, Jessica, blah, blah, blah. So this is about, okay, by now we're into August, September. We get to Christmas. We still can't get THC into her. She's like, that's all taboo. And at Christmas, I get the brilliant idea that we're going to break up some chocolate. We're going to drop it into the normal chocolate, and we're going to sneak it in on her. And I swear to God, she's so uptight. What a bitch. And <laughs> she in her chair, and I mean, it's tiny, the whole family's gone quiet, and everybody's like, what the fuck is she going to do? And everybody's ready to go, <laughs> just get it, right? Just get and because I'm that kid. <laughs> Oh. My mother, you you hear my mother go, Jessica. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it, I'm getting high. Is <laughs> this that marijuana stuff? And I'm like, so we don't call it marijuana. It's called cannabis. <laughs> As a and then I watch her about five, seven minutes later. It did not take long. There was not much to her anyway, but she starts sliding into the chair like this going, I don't know what everybody's talking about. I don't feel a thing. And for the first time all day, she goes quiet. Wow. Yeah. And my dad goes, where can we get more? Oh, <laughs> so he waited 70 years for this moment. Right. Oh, They've been married by now forever. So Long and short is eventually mom catches on that she's got to have the THC. She eventually found somebody in Arizona. We found her a medical marijuana doctor who taught her because she's right. such a control freak that if you actually put the topical to the to the wrist or the jugular or the, or the yeah the thing or the thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it will bypass the liver. It won't get you high, but it'll go in and do the work. It's like set it, putting in a suppository. Right. So, um, I got the cat sneaking up on me. So, um, your suppository. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, mother. Yeah, kitty, kitty. Um, so here we are now. That was almost six years ago. Wow. How cool is that? So, um, went back to the doctor to tell them that where they can go. Pretty much, and she's oh. still here to torture us all. So, um, you know, and she lives her life on cannabis, and now suddenly she's the authority, and she's extracting it, and she makes it for herself at home, which is the most infuriating effing thing on the planet. And do you think that anybody's ever come and said, gosh, Jessica, I was so We're wrong. Sorry. I'm sorry. We're sorry. Okay, but I was just going to say, even if you never get that in life, like, you have you know. to know that. Like, so vindicated. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But this yeah. is. I should have something like you'll find it in a letter one day in a memoir of some sort. Right. Where you're like, it's everything I thought it would be. And like, you know, I'm so not over it. But the truth is, is that it, it, it validates 
the why of why I get up at, out of bed every day. And the passion is let's get it compliant. Let's get it regulated so that people like my mother and your father and her sister and my brother and whomever the fuck else right. has access to it as an option and a choice. And it's legitimate so that nobody ever has to go through life like I did with God, God Jessica, when are you going to get your shit together? Stop smoking that pot. Yeah. Right. Well, it's kind of like the federal government in this metaphor is like your mother, your father, all of our, you know, baby boomers, I guess, that, you know, didn't have that kind of experience. So if the government's like that, if they just had that idea, maybe we can move things along a little bit. Well, thanks, Nancy Reagan, you know, because that was <laughs> not, you know how many times they sent that to me? They threatened me with outward bound school. Do you know what outward bound school is? They throw her in They take the little Jewish princess <laughs> out to the middle of the desert in Utah. They dump her there with a bunch of hardcore criminal kids, like Serious game. Oh, it's a boot camp. It's a boot camp, right? You live off the land kind of thing. That was about as close as my boarding school was going to get. This is a small group. <laughs> it's a very small group. And I, you know, and I feel like... Why are we learning this? <laughs> she did cocaine. All I do is smoke weed. What? And it's kind of their fault because I, I was raised in San Francisco and they sent me to a Jewish kid, to the only Catholic girls' school that would take the Jewish kid. And I had to walk through my bus transfer required that I got off at one end of Haight Street in the Ashbury and walked the seven blocks to catch the next bus to get to school. So I had to walk through the hate. Oh, my God. You're going to tell me I'm not going to smoke pot with all the other Bob Marley loving hate Ashbury cookies <laughs> that are left over. What? I made friends. It really sounds like you had no choice. That like cannabis use for it was predestined, really yeah. genetic almost. Yeah. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that you found each other because yeah. I, my God. I have, I found my best life. The truth is I was 47 years old when I finally figured out what I wanted to be when I grew up and I brought <laughs> I was, and I brought all those experiences from all those other businesses, all that life, and yeah. I brought it into this industry. And I went, you know what? I'm going to legitimize this. And it really became my endeavor and my passion to legitimize it, to give it nomenclature and language, to help people understand that it's a science, that it is actual molecular science, your body and the plant. I instinctively knew it. Every witch doctor on the planet instinctively knew it. I know that I have been hung on a cross and burned because I live, I've dreamt that many times. I know I was making this stuff in other lives. That's why I think I gravitated to it and went, this is my jam. I was never a gateway drug. Okay, trust me when I tell you, yeah. I never wanted to do anything else. I would look at yeah. those people go, I don't even drink. And I was in the tequila industry. That's why I was so good at it because I didn't do my own supply. Right. You were in yeah. I don't, products, yeah. That doesn't do anything for me. Losing control doesn't do mm -hmm. anything for me. Mm -hmm. the, you and Gina have that in common. Yeah. Gina used cannabis as an exit, you know what I'm saying, from other drugs. I never tried it until I was 23 years old. Yeah. I tragically lost my dad. I and turned to the doctors because what the fuck else do you do at 23 yeah. when your world is upside down? Right. I was addicted to Xanax. I was addicted to Valium. And, you know, my, everyone I knew on the planet, Lois, my little brother, my cousins, everybody's smoking weed. I think they're all a bunch of drug addicts. Like everyone, <laughs> everyone in my life's going to die from this terrible, evil right. plan. And I, I believe that. A hook, line, and sinker, all of it. You also had ants falling asleep at the table in the yeah, potatoes. I mean, so. yeah. <laughs> you know, we had severe yeah, drug severe issues, drug like issues. severe drug issues, yeah. you know. So uh, I, it, it was all drugs to me. I, right. I, I couldn't Nancy see Reagan through. sent the message Home. Yeah, and, and I bought it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, in a way, I lose my dad. I become an addict. It, it, you know, maybe three, four months after this, and I'm, I'm just, I'm teaching high school addicted to pharmaceuticals out of my fucking mind. I is a kite every day. Okay, so my cousins, I'm crying. My cousins are crying. It's Thanksgiving. They're begging me to try this plant. Like it will change your life. Give it a chance. And again, no, no way, no way. You know, it's just this terrible plan to become an addict. I'm going to get high, you know, as, as I'm on fucking Xanax and Valium. Right. You might get high. <laughs> like, it's so dangerous. Like, you know? um, so I might be there. there. <laughs> I mean, it's so, just, yeah, it's a just great explanation of, like, we're so attached to these words. Right, right these, these words. It's common. It's nomenclature. Yeah, right. Nomenclature is, is right. Yes. So I, I, I try it. I take a hit. And Jessica, I swear to God, and Lois has heard the story 20 times, but, like, 
my entire body just evened out. I never was scared. I never felt anxious. I never felt this crazy high that I was warned about. Like, and we come to learn that's fucking homeostasis. Like my body's like, thank you. Finally, (laughs) I fucking pay attention. You know, and I, I've never looked back. So I'm, you know, 24 years every day of my life since. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it changed my entire life. I think we should give out awards for years. You know, like in I AA, think, yeah. give awards for non-use. I think we should totally give out awards for years because I, 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 I like doing our Patreon right? thing. Right? Yeah. 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 Our ass trophy. Yep. Like how my my yeah. husband and I went to my husband same deal. So he he was. A guy. <laughs> okay and he was a really bad one because he did his own supply oh. but um one when we yeah. met he was super like want to drugs right that's your problem <laughs> over the years he's been like you know you do you and i support you and i love you i'm not really thrilled with it but you do you when i got into this industry i frankly said listen it's paying the bills so if you don't like it too bad so sad yeah. And then he had to give into it. Then about a year and a half into it, we go to MJ BizCon. Now, let me take this back. My husband was raised in Santa Cruz, California. So, you know, his experience with pot is kind of unlike anybody else's in Santa Cruz, California. All the way down to he had a friend that actually planted in a forest in the trees. Oh my uh, God. They can sit them down the limbs, I'm told. They had to bring in the helicopters to find yeah, it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, See, yeah, in, people. But I, the, right. the Santa Cruz stories alone, because that's like as close to Emerald Triangle as you're going to get going up the North Coast, right? So everybody smokes pot, breeds everywhere, whatever. Everybody's pothead. But he wasn't. Okay. So fast forward, here we are. 20 plus years later. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> and I got one foot in the grave. <laughs> we go to BizCon and we go to an after party and it's a rooftop consumption and then the other two floors. I think it was like Dave Tran's event. David, you know, whatever. Dave's event. So, yeah. um, Whatever magazine, he, dope. It was the dope magazine. Okay. So when you get upstairs, you got to go to the bar, right? Got to get drinks because everybody's got to get drinks. And I say to my husband, so I got the equipment to get the drinks. You need to go stand over there and wait because it's Vegas. And so they're waiting for the drinks. <laughs> We're not together. And it's Vegas. And, and I look <laughs> over and he's he's standing between an 80 year old very dapper distinguished looking gentleman we're talking bow tie fast jacket and we're not talking cheap it was couture and then the kid on the other side was about 22 23 super trendy super hip also dressed to the nines and my husband who doesn't do it can't handle it they clouded him inadvertently cloud him right and he's listening to the conversation going on between them and I'm watching him and he's <laughs> got these expressions because he's very expressive on his right. he can't hide it. and as I'm approaching him with his cocktail he goes dude because that's the loving warm intimate right. terminology oh. that he uses with me dude I didn't even know that all the other potheads were smart like you too. Like I thought you were an anomaly. <laughs> he used to call me a highly functioning pothead and I was like, no, honey, that's everybody. <laughs> no, and you're, you're right. Like that, I'm glad you brought that up. Like as, as big as the stigma is around weed in general, the, the second closest stigma is you're a bunch of lazy couch potato, non-functioning, shouldn't be members of society, you know, like what the hell? Well, you know, in the Wall Street in the 80s, you definitely, you know, were, were playing with the white, you know what I mean? Like it's just, just no man, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the mentality of even with our generation, right? Because we were part of the, the, the this is your brain. <laughs> Here's right. the drugs. Here's the egg on the pavement. Here's your brain on drugs. And I was like, well, damn, that's a lot of focus right there. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to say, I want, I actually, I want to kind of tie these two things together because I think from like hearing us talking about, you know, like 
all of the, well, they really, they're, they're fights, they're, they're strides to get to where we are. And I think compliance is a nice entrance there. And how do we keep nice things? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> how do we have the nice things? Exactly. Right? Because again, you know, we run risk every day when you, especially if you own a business, you know what I mean? Like to not understand the compliance aspect of this. And, um, and so and many don't. That means the people. You, you know, you're selling D8 about you getting behind a car. It's going to get you stoned. Like we're not going to have D8 much longer. Right. You know, so where does. Where you exactly. Use food, so, unfortunately, and you don't have that anymore. So. Right. <laughs> the way that it really looks is this. We have language that's written that says you can operate this way. But we have so many operatives looking to gaslight or manipulate the language in their favor to pigeonhole us to disfavor. Mm -hmm. So you have to get out ahead of it. You have to put up basically, there's no way to 100% protect ourselves, right? Compliance now falls into merchant processing, banking, legal every time you hire an attorney right he's like are you compliant i don't know i had three conversations earlier today about that and brands right. because now they want to know on the private label side of things where that compliance is are you permitted can you manufacture do you have a cgmp are you iso do you fit the novel foods act can we take you into japan korea i mean every single one of these countries now has different liabilities as well and considerations as well now we have mexico coming online canada we sit between the two if you don't think that we're going to see international trade happen just like that and regulation please they're all about the money we have to fill 1.9 trillion dollars well, like so much well, how long they can let this go like that once you start again expanding this right. with our own but art. it isn't until now that we're starting to see brands and businesses in our space, be it hemp or cannabis, really start taking compliance seriously. I can't tell you how often people have been like, I don't need that. And I say, you know what? I like a fixed subscription every month. It's dirt cheap. And it's so that you stay out of trouble. You get a little list that goes, okay, this week, here's what's up. Protect yourself. Next week, here's what's up. That somebody is looking out for your best interest. That somebody goes, listen, that label's not going to pass FDA approvals or oh great it works for florida now you want to distribute in louisiana and you're selling to somebody online turns out you have to have the license for that and if you're not compliant on their label strategy you're now committing a felon you're trafficking and the inability to connect those dots or think that through and take that seriously is the liability sure you can't protect the idea is you create enough barriers between whoever it is out here that wants to come get you and your entity right here, it becomes expensive, difficult, and a pain in the butt for years and years and years to get to you. That's, that's the design. Not right. and you have got to take that into consideration. You have to take into consideration your content. You cannot just put out a review or let somebody dump a review, even through Trustpilot that says, I ate this and it fixed my pain. Because every time you do that, the FDA goes, oh, there's another red mark, ching. And some politician goes, oh, got you again. Right. Well, you can see yeah, that. You know, like clicks. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, with the credit card processing that, you know, hemp businesses are allowed to use now, that's a key component. They are starting to look at your social media channels um, again. So as that's the more that you're actually getting access to processing, you really just see the bigger picture of what the end project is for the federal government. Right. I mean, if they're already setting these stones, they're going to be looking at industries like that. What are you guys doing to protect and mitigate risk? Right. Um but I think you have to understand what the government wants out of it. And here's where it all rests. GW Pharmaceuticals has just sold to a bigger pharmaceutical company. Ooh. Two other pharmaceutical companies are coming up right behind it. All three of whom are lobbying for exclusive rights to administer the medicine that potentially will wipe us out. If you can't figure out that the new regulations are written to take us out at extraction, that was the intention. If you're going to knock them out, take them out at the knees, go for the extraction. Or if you're not looking at the PACT Act, okay, effective in a few days, you can't even put a coil in the mail. You put a coil in the mail, you're in deep, deep trouble. All of which designed to cut off all of these industries because the government isn't making the collected money. COVID, right. okay, whatever you want, the masks, everybody's making money. Right. Lots of money. I have a timeline on that. They, I just don't really see a lot of things in motion for a push button event tomorrow. Like, what is the timeline on this, in your opinion? 
I think that right now we have a dichotomy happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have some corporations that are pushing hard at the door to allow us access because there's money to be made. Ulta's, Sephora's that are owned by Macy's and the Limited or whoever else the conglomerate might be. You've got Walmart now who's dabbling and has the product on the shelf. Okay, GNC is dying. They're all vitamins and the vitamin industry is attacked by the FDA as much as we are. So GNC is dying. GNC goes, well, wait a minute. We can save this with CBD. They're actually and have been banging at the door in Washington Mm-hmm. for approval so that they can turn the model into the CBD model, right? And they can start going after right. that. The more brands that come to the table, the more demand, I think we're one in every four here in the U.S. demanding some level of the product now or experiencing the product, that prevails. That's where the money is. So I think we're moving faster. There's conversations now of banking. The SEC is getting involved. Now the issue rests in and really – this is where spirits comes in for me. The blueprint on the spirits and how we got from prohibition to the tiered state concept. It really is ruled and governed by state tiers, meaning state overrides federal in most cases. There's a basic platform to have access in and then that state has its distribution channels after that. And then they collect along the way. About 12 years ago, I was already hearing Southern Wine and Spirits talking about cornering the market on cannabis distribution. They were already making the noise and having the conversations. They wanted to hold distribution nationally. If you look at the blueprint of how we came out of prohibition and gone and legalized spirits, that's pretty much how I think this is all gonna go. The only issue is that in this case, we have big tobacco and pharma trying to cut us off. And it is both now because tobacco is losing to the inhalant experience Mm -hmm. and the vaping experience right? It's no longer cool. And now we have hempettes sitting in convenience stores. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado Pure Hemp. That's, I did that. I'm really proud. Um, okay. every circle, it's not my brand, but it is sitting in every Circle K in the country. Awesome. Right? Awesome. And we're seeing the hempette now replace the cigarette. It's the same damn experience, except it's healthy for you. You won't die from it. Damn it. Now we're not going to get lung cancer. What? Right? It all, it all feeds. If you, if, if you start looking outside at the pocket of your convenient, comfortable little window and start expanding that out, you can see what's coming. Right. Yeah. My answer to that is, I firmly believe that by the year 2024, yeah, I was saying about three years. administration, right. we will be completely legal. Legal. Right. I don't know if that's medically legal or rec legal, but legal at a level that we can do transactions without having to change your processor every six months because they mm-hmm. lost their rights or took your money. Right. You no longer have to worry or live in that high risk concept, right? Because that's um, really what it is in high risk. Well, you, it, by that point, we'll ha- you'll see it. It'll be just people that cannot get into the marketplace, you know? Right. Um, and, regardless, you know? Again, if I drive from my furthest point here in Florida and I go all the way up to Louisiana, I promise you I'm going to see at least 10 billboards. <laughs> no, right. 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 Yeah. We've become about as mainstream as you can get for where we are in all of the moving parts in the puzzle coming together. The banking, the insurance, okay? There's Nobody's moving the the insurance. Right. And insurance is what's coming next. Can you insure the products? Can you insure the user end? Where does the liability cut off on that insurance? What about class action lawsuits? I mean, right. really, we're, we're barreling towards those. No, yeah. What will those examples look like? So again, this is why compliance and regulation is so important. I love the FDA. And they love me. We talk a lot. <laughs> right? And I make a point of calling each and every state head for the agricultural department to make sure that 
were online. You have really retarded states. Hello, I submit my application to New York in week one of January. They took my money, they cashed the check. I don't have my permits. I can't get them and nobody can answer the question. They, they're like, yo, hold on. 20 minutes later, yo, I don't know. They're passing me around. I still can't get answers, and that's hours and hours on the phone. So at a state level, we're still scratching our heads going, what are you doing? Right. Now, and I always think of, you know, my mind always goes to what are, what is the state doing for new businesses to set the path for success? You know, where are the resources for them? Where, you know, I mean, usually if you have a business, you've got resources for your business. Right. You only find exclusion in their resources for the type of business you have. So again, it's where, where are the minds that are putting these programs and this legislation together to make it successful or they really just want to see us run to the ground fully knowing that one day it's just going to be a farmer situation. Like, is this where the mindset is? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's all over the place because like yeah, any sure. industry that's making history, you have the operatives that are in it like you and I that are like, listen, we're going to fix your ocular problems and we're going to fix whatever. And, you know, we can come to these solutions for you medically. And we are the witch doctors going, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. And then you have the guy over here that's like, oh, CBD is really great for you, but I don't have any CBD in my product, but you're right. spending for my product, but I didn't buy any CBD and combine it in my product. You got that guy. And you got the guy over here, you know, every moving part of humanity. And we are pre-programmed to commit sin. We like that by nature. So you, yeah. you have those people that really don't care what those outcomes are. And again, some of the biggest brands in our industry, both sides of the industry, you would never know are still coming out of bodegas and back rooms and the environment is not sanitary. Right. Right. I couldn't wow. even begin. When yeah, I decided it's just, compliance was going to be my thing, I literally started walking through front doors. I would call people, go, I, I need a vendor and a supplier. And they'd be like, I can't open the door to you. And I'd say, well, okay, then I guess we can't do business. Click right. the next guy. Eventually they started coming back and going, can you come through the front door? Can, can do you do business? Yeah, we're starting to open our front doors. Well, that was your mistake because that's when I really started to see what was really going on out there. Right. Vape juice getting mixed in bathtubs and oh. stuff getting dumped into your instant pot. And that's fine. But if my kid's allergic to peanut butter and it was on the counter next to your instant pot, you just killed my kid. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, think about, right? Me to back that up to help you out through that. Kind of right up. or that guy that's mixing up the cartridges but gee i didn't i now can tell you what cartridges still have solvent and which don't yeah and those solvents don't think for one second are boring holes in your brain Maybe. even when you have the solvent removed we're still it's still you know going to get there so it's <laughs> You know, the extra caution the better right exactly or lab environments where you know, things are blowing up. Nobody's being taken care of. We're not following OSHA. Lives are at risk. Okay. You're dealing with solvents. You're dealing with sharp objects. You're dealing with something that does intoxicate you really, if you're standing over it and inhaling it up, you're dealing with all of these different moving parts that make it all a liability. You have those people in the industry that don't care. You know, there's, there is a company out there that extracted some stuff on a land piece of land that they were renting and they poured the material down a well jesus the damage is 2.2 million dollars oh. environmental damage and that included a couple of ranches because it seeped out and affected the livestock oh my god but they didn't care because they're making money right right and those are the ones that that we'd like to see gone Right. And that's why we go after compliance. The more of us that ramp up to play fair mm -hmm. and lawfully, those are the ones of us that will still be standing when we really start seeing sweeps come down and they go, you know what? Not only am I giving you the letter, but 24 hours from now, I'm going to issue a bill that is so high, it's going to put you out of business in 36. And I've seen it happen. Yeah, almost criminal in some cases when you mess the EPA like that, you know? Whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. So I'm a small business. So I, you know, I want, to, I want people to kind of understand like how to 
to utilize you. You know, you, you, you said you, earlier, you get all the time, like, why would I need that? Right. Um, and I'm sure that's probably the deciding factor. I, what's my impact? I'm like one employee and, you know, but what is the, what is the, the elevator pitch on compliance? You know, I mean, there's not a lot of people like you, we know you, um, <laughs> Well, and they pretend they are. No, you know what right. I mean? There's a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people that think that they- I didn't know you put the check in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cash it. I mean, it's, it. it's just, I think like having lack of the understanding of the need, right? Or what kind of a person actually can take a big umbrella of these uh, these situations. Um, but again, like I, I don't think people understand the importance of that because there's only two things that can happen. Something bad can happen and it not cost you and something bad can happen and-, and a lot of well, I think like Lowe said, people's biggest confusion is the small business. Like I, I can't afford that. I, I can't afford to have a compliance officer look at my business, but you know, they think that's only yeah. for the big business. But like, how do you think the big business got to be big business? You know what I mean? And they're, they're not, right. they're not putting enough thought into that. Yeah. And that's right. what you come in. I catered to the small business because I'm all about the small business because I'm a small business. So let's start there. Yeah. Um, and we all have to survive. And if I don't have my small business, then I have to work for somebody else and I am expendable. Sure. We don't live in a world where we can afford to be expendable. So there's that. You have taken whatever resources, whatever you could afford, however you could afford to do it to set up this business. And you are now it's not just the investment of your money, but now you've dragged the family into it because they're believing in you and you've dragged your spouse or whomever else into it and they believe in you. You have to make it go. Right. And it has to keep going. Okay. But it's not going to keep going if you break the law. And if you think that you're one in 5,000 and nobody's paying attention, think again. Okay. Right. They are coming every last one of us over and over and over again they're coming well there anything just coming off of it just because of the generally not recognized as safe it's something so simple it's something that's not even part of what you're doing right we'll report you because the consumer didn't get something free or something they were expecting or something and they report you you're at risk the minute you put anything out there on that great big wide web you're at risk <laughs> anything you say can and will be used against you if you don't know that for sure please go back and watch every news reel from the last 365 days okay right. and we're pulling up and i'm not just talking about recent politics i'm talking about we see people losing their jobs for acts they commit 20 years ago somebody pulled up the evidence on right so you're vulnerable, you're vulnerable. Yeah. every single person that works for your company reflects your company one false move by any one of those moving parts they've got you anything right. that you put out there in writing they've got you anything you vlog they've yeah. got you it, and it is there is no place to go and this is how it works. The FDA doesn't just write you a letter. It does not that neat and pretty. The first thing they do is they send you the warning letter. But right after the warning letter, within 24 to 36 hours, you get a court demand because they're actually suing you. Mm -hmm. There is a brand out there, one of the recipients of the last wave of letters. The number started at $6 million. Oh my the federal government for just over one and that was because he had people give him the money do you have that money hell no okay no. he's a small business like you right. and me okay right. now you get a letter from the federal government i crap my pants so how do you avoid that i'm set up so that it's affordable it's a sliding scale you come to me and you say this is the information I want to know every single week or every uh, every month. And I say, okay, this is what it's going to cost you. That could be 150 bucks a month, all the way up to $2,000 a month, depending on the work that I have to do. Right. We will scrub the website. We will scrub all your social media. We will clean up anything anybody else posted about you in social media. We clean up anything out there that's in print. We help you get everything pulled down. I'll help you restructure. I teach you the language and the proper language and how to do it. I teach you how to put those barriers up so that in the event that somebody does sue you, they have to climb through I don't know how many walls and layers in order to get to you. I teach you how to set up that business and organize that business so that your employees are not a risk because every right. single employee is a risk to you. The minute yeah, they they're looking to you for that civil suit, right? Right. <laughs> so I do HR, 
I do inclusion and diversity. I handle a lot of the hot conversations that are happening socially right now. I speak several languages and I am pretty culturally diverse and world traveled. Um, I teach you advertising and marketing campaigns that get you past the issues at hand. I teach you how to use suggestive language, how to change your language, change your thought. It is not an indefinite, ongoing, forever relationship if you don't want it to be. But it's a resource to mm -hmm. keep you on track so that you don't lose your investment because all the blood, all the sweat, all the tears, all the sacrifices, all the missed school plays, all the missed family events, all the missed holidays, all the missed personal time, all the missed one sec, Jack, breaking up. That's the investment. And you got to take care of that investment. Yeah. So that's what I aim to do. No, and I think we can just make a suggestion if you are starting a business to include this in your business plan. You know? Right. This is something, again, you're not being shown that when you're doing this. It's not high on that. It's, it's attorney. Uh, and attorneys will turn around in three minutes and tell you exactly what they're not going to do for you. For a lot who, more money. For a lot more money and who you have to find, right? Well, there is that. So if you, you get in trouble, your retainer starts anywhere between $2,500 and $25,000. That's just to have Right. And Absolutely. then it's right. adding up. So I do have an attorney that backs me. I pay for him and yeah. he makes sure that we're always operating to the letter of the law. So anything that might be in question, if I'm not sure about the language, then we, he and I convene yeah. on it and everybody gets the benefit of that. And when you come to the table, the minute you come to the table with an attorney, he's quoting you by the hour. He commands anywhere between three hundred and fifty and thousand dollars an hour. I'm nowhere near that. Nowhere near that because it should no. be affordable to you to run your business correctly. I want this so badly on every conceivable shelf in every doctor's office. I am willing. Right. Almost, he's almost free. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's very, you know, it's very, I don't know why it's so hard to convince people that, you know, the bigger cost is the attorney, the FDA, the fines when the smallest investment is the people that are there to, again, as you said earlier, build the walls between, you know, the A and B, um, you know, and it's, it's just smart, you know. It's very yeah. Smart. If any of our viewers wanted to get a hold of you and wanted to, you know, hire you or at least reach out to you to kind of consult them for hire, yeah. how would we do that? So I used to have a website, and then I decided that was kind of dumb. So I have a Facebook page. I am the Hemp Encantress. It's a play on in Can Canna and Enchant. So Enchantress. Like so it's E N C A N N T R E S S. Okay. And you can send me an email at Jessica Arendt all together. J E S S I C A A R E N T at gmail.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna, my favorite place to find you. Yeah. <laughs> true. true. We'll be putting, you know, we'll make sure we have all this information, like just not sitting here, but we'll get it, you know. Um, I know we've been questions for a while, but do you have time for us to throw some questions at you? Some more fun questions, some <laughs> anti compliance, pull them out of our booty questions? Absolutely. Yeah. Like a smoke first. This is our favorite part. I'll take it <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wait, let me get ready for you. There you go. Please do. All right, I'm actually going to do this too. All right. Otherwise, I'm going to have something to All right. All right, are you ready, Miss I'm ready. Encantress? Okay. What is the last song that you downloaded? Storm Warning by Hunter, ha Hunter Hayes. Okay, I have no idea what it is. What, what the fuck, the fuck is, is that? that? Is that TikTok? What kind of music? <laughs> is that TikTok? What genre? Um, that one is country, but I actually oh, listen. Okay. That explains it. <laughs> I am a music junkie, so I listen to all genres. I'm very okay. moody. No, all right. Fair enough. I've actually stumbled across it while we're driving in, you know, Wisconsin here. It's hard not to stumble it's on every Wisconsin. Every channel. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. You I've got one for you. What is your favorite holiday? Holiday. Easter. Yeah. Huh. 
I, I love, love I'm gonna throw this I love out. Jewish girl, but I love Easter. I mean, um, you were raised in a Catholic school, so you're. And already... I did talk to you while you were coloring eggs, and you didn't sound that excited. So go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I had like five toddlers, and one kept sticking the hands in. Um, she's so extra that kid. I don't even know her name anymore because. <laughs> like, like, her so, so funny. Um, Easter because I love plant life. I love green and Easter represents new life and yeah, beautiful true. flowers. And I was raised in San Francisco and the flower show was always during Easter week and every okay. single department store window was decorated in the flowers. And I oh. love Easter eggs and the inside the eggs. Remember they used to do those little sugar scenes? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is, all the colorful eggs, but I just, I, I hate Christmas, but I love Easter. <laughs> I love Easter. Yeah, you like the spring of it all. Oh, that's I awesome. I love it. That's cool, man. All right. How long does it take you to get ready? How long does it take to become the hemp catress? Well, we sad. Is it a yeah. process? Is it a ready? Ready? <laughs> from the minute from the minute I say go until I'm ready to walk out the door? It is always exactly forty nine minutes. Wow, it's impressive. impressive. It's down in a minute being an Very eye impressive. Weird. So you I don't stop the smoke during that process because my process will go from 40 minutes to like three and a half hours real quick. <laughs> no, no, that's that's Thank how you. you avoid taking and you know, I, I was like, what the heck do people do when they're getting ready? Like I have this niece, she's gorgeous, but she'll be gone for three hours. She comes back <laughs> out looking exactly the same way she sure. went in. Like you were already I, looks like that. I can relate. <laughs> I All I gotta say is 32 minutes is spent dealing with this. <laughs> During that episode from Simon with Elaine with the hair. Okay. Oh, yeah. Out of time. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm ashamed <laughs> to start wearing wigs. I swear to God, it's getting ridiculous. I like <laughs> it. But I like that bed head thing. So, anyhow. <sighs> the grungier, the better. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal? <laughs> <laughs> And um, what do you guys want to know, Jess? Can you it's kind of wrong to be a vegetarian. That's what's wrong here. Animal crackers are totally acceptable. <laughs> um, no, yes, yes. Wait a minute, no. Wait, <laughs> vegan, so a vegan doesn't do the eggs and the vegetarian does, right? Because there's right. eggs and animal crackers. Yeah, right. So, so te technically and literally, no, but figuratively, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, perfect. Weird. Right. Perfect answer. Oh. All right. Um, what was your last Halloween costume? A marionette. Uh, oh, oh, wait. Uh, stop it. Do you have a picture? No, because we <laughs> never got out because my husband took a Benadryl and passed out. <laughs> Okay, wait, so the marionette. He is hardcore. <laughs> okay, so here's here's the story. Um, I, it was all, so stupid. It was all wrapped around a tutu. I just wanted to wear a tutu. I've never worn a tutu, so I wanted to wear a tutu. So I decided. Okay. Great. Okay, I'm a big girl. You got to figure things out. Okay, so I'm like, well, if I'm going to do the tutu, then I have to come up with something really clever. And I studied theater, and I loved mine. I'm really good at it, actually. So I was like, and my husband's tall. He won't wear a mask. He doesn't like heavy costumes. And I'm like, all I can do is put a freaking shirt on that bad boy, <laughs> throw a cape on him, and tell him to hold the sticks. There. Yeah. Awesome. And he did. So I had this whole thing planned out. And oh. while I was getting ready in my 49 minutes, he took a Benadryl. <laughs> he couldn't make it 50 minutes, this guy. Did you have like the lines and everything painted? Like how far into this were you? So yeah. I was all the way, I had painted oh, all the way. And I had the little dog. I was cute, oh, but he man. he couldn't rally for the party, and I don't go out alone. And so we didn't talk at least till after Christmas because I ate Christmas. Like <laughs> <laughs> right, till later that night, till it was the next Christmas. <laughs> Nobody got lucky that week. Yeah, you don't have the grudge at all. That's what. You oh, know. That's absolutely not. Hey, okay. girl, what does a person need to be happy besides a tutu? <laughs> <laughs> okay well this is actually a pretty serious question um you you i think 
you need to self self awareness. Oh, nailed it. Yeah. So it's yeah. been an incredible journey. And I am always the first one to be introspective. I ask myself, what was my part in that? Could I have corrected that? Could I have done that differently and better? And what did I learn from the experience, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just how I live my life. And then I go, okay, I'm really sorry. So um, self-awareness. If you are not keenly aware of your own boundaries, of who you are, your core values, which you will accept and not accept, You'll never be happy because Beautiful. others That's a will have an adverse impact mm. because you're susceptible to the concepts or ideals of what others perceive you to be. Oh. If you go social media, you'll discover the singular thing that triggers me is for you to decide what I meant by that. Oh, yeah. I dumped a 30 year friendship last night because I deemed her words to be cruel. I made a statement about what should and should not be educated in a classroom. And I, that I, I did see that response, yeah. And you and were very, I, very classy in your response. It was very. Okay, I don't know any of this. Can you tell us? Okay. I'm not allowed, so, on, Facebook. I'm not allowed yeah. on Facebook. Sure. So I posted about. My Princess Boy. It was a book that was written in 2012 or nine or something, and it's now a conversation. And the story is from a mother's perspective of the cross dressing, I hate this terminology, cross dressing toddler, and his acceptance of that concept. I don't believe that the writing is designed to address transgender decisions, sure. but the acceptance of a child through active play and self discovery. And in that, post i said true story i had a gay child and trust me when i tell you i knew this kid was gay when he was 18 months old okay i know my children <laughs> and i i have always lived and prescribed to you live your life in authenticity yes. period okay no matter what anybody else says god gave you this life he didn't give it to your mom your dad right. he, he respect but he didn't give it to everybody else you you got to do something with it okay yeah. and that's how my grandmother raised me so <clears throat> i said in this post that i had raised this gay child and the child as a toddler loved to wear his sister's dresses he wanted to be a sister okay there he was under the table with all the jewelry from the pretty pretty princess game nobody went around the board he just put the stuff on okay and his biological father from whom i was divorced lost his mind Okay, you're making my kid gay. Why would you do this? What is oh wrong with you? And I would say, this is self-expression. And if this is how he wants to play, let him play. I don't give a damn. He's happy. Right. 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 Then we morphed into kicking the kid out of the closet, which I did. And he's about 10, 11 at the time. And now that whole side of the family and mine is saying you're such an attention seeking human being that you did all of this for your attention. Oh my God. Oh yeah, it was bad. These are difficult years. Okay. And then we moved to Colorado Springs. And if you know anything about Colorado Springs 12 years ago, you know, they were super anti-gay. Oh, so I had mothers, mothers would march up to me and say, it would recite Leviticus and oh my God. Awful oh, things. I've had women spit in my face. I've oh. had people tell me my kid should be dead, right? Oh, and I'd God. laugh and I'd say, bless your heart. There's a long line of people that feel the same way. Please step to the back. I swear to God, I got really good at it. It never bothered me because I knew myself and I knew that child. And my job was to protect that child, okay? But I didn't teach, I taught a morality. I didn't expect it to be taught and it shouldn't be something you teach in a classroom environment. That's a home conversation, period. Your job is to teach, in my estimation, arithmetic, English, all the things I didn't have the time for at home. Yeah. Okay. That's your job. That's always been your job, the basics. Right. And then I'm supposed to fill in the gaps. Right. But then the government came along and went, no, the school needs to fill in the gaps because you're not doing a good enough job. Okay. Government has no business in my home life, mm -hmm. my morality and my core values and my character and my religious beliefs. Okay. So I put this post up and somebody that's known me for 30 years interprets that I said 
if you relate to that, then you just shouldn't go to school. Put up or shut up. And she tagged somebody in a response to a comment made by somebody I've also known for 20 years, who's very close to me and I adore. And he said in that post, I've always been targeted or was targeted as a child for being entirely too feminine. Mm -hmm. And she responded to that by saying to him, in Jessica's, then by Jessica's post here, you had a business going to school, you should have stayed out of school and been homeschooled. What the hell? Yeah, it was way out of pocket. It was a stretch of the imagination, but it was also a stretch from the original purpose of that book. Right. And that's when I went, um, you know, I can tolerate a lot of things, but what I will not tolerate, and I didn't say it quite this nicely, is you putting intention to my words, you right. putting intent to my thoughts. I've been accused of being a racist. I've been accused of being a homophobe. Yeah, I've been accused of being an elitist. I've been accused. Okay, the list is long for my own adult children at this point. And I continue to say I've never changed who I am. Right. And the truth is, I was raised by not one, not two, but three sisters from San Salvador who were hired to take care of me because I had a parent that didn't want to. And my first language was Spanish. And I learned to speak English because they raised me because I had a parent that didn't want to in a 7,000 square foot house where she was downstairs and I was upstairs in the children's quarters and I was seen wow. and not heard. Okay. And then I was raised in San Francisco where my friends had last names like Song, Lamb, Chu, mm -hmm. <laughs> Garcia, Melendez. Okay. I was raised in the time of civil rights and I was raised in the time of Martin Luther King when he said, be your core and be your character. When I was five years old, I won a national art contest. True story. <laughs> we were coming out of anger with Japan. It was right behind the war, the Japanese occupation of China, and we had Japanese internment camps and conservation camps in this country. Right. And the Japanese were despised and they despised the American. And there was this huge disconnect in the year, I want to say is like 1973-ish. And the assignment in the classroom is, come up with something that pulls the two cultures together. Mm -hmm. And my best friend in kindergarten was Akiko Takeuchi. So I painted Akiko Takeuchi uh -huh. <laughs> pledging our flag and I painted myself pledging the Japanese flag and it ended up on billboards all the way across the country, the Pentel Corporation sent me brand new pens every single year, Aww, year and ten thousand dollars. I've never been that person to give a shit <laughs> who you want to lay down in bed with, who you choose to love, what you choose to look like, if you want to pierce yourself or tattoo yourself from head to toe. Whether you listen to punk rock or you listen to country, whether you're a socialite or you live at the trailer park, whether your skin is black, brown, Asian, Barney purple, I have never given two shits. Right. What I care about is who are you? What do you care about? Do you have a character? Do you have morality? Right. Do you know right from wrong? Right. Are you still for me? Lie to me? Cheat me? If none of those apply and you're a definitively good person, we got a future. Absolutely. And if any moving part of that applies, then I'm in doubt and question. But you don't have to doubt or question where I live because it's kind of evident everywhere. Right. And I've had people come and accuse me. I've just spent the last year combating somebody in the industry who's been harassing the holy heck out of me and spitting out these lies of racism everywhere she can. And every single door she attempts to go like this on, they go, um, that's not the person I know. No, I mean, people that talk about other people, it speaks more about them than who they're talking about. Like, yeah. I mean, that happens just all the time. I yeah. mean, public, they try and take us out every which way but loose for, you know, since we started this way, but we, we you can't let that phase you. They don't, if, if they're saying that they don't know you, it, no. it's, it's irrelevant. They you know?
Now, and really, people that spend so much time pointing out your stereo, your stereotypes, the ones that you have, your races, and whatever it is, it, it, you, are, you, you, you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> that's them. That's them, 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 them. That's the projection. Dude, it would- if my I, answer I, is, have a, I have a different kind of epic mindset that doesn't think a certain way. So no matter how much that's obvious to other people, I'll never see it. Do you understand? Like there's like things like me and Jesus, I'll drive her crazy, like hundred percent crazy. Cause it's not, I'm not a logical person. I just don't see the world in a very specific way. And she's like, hello, red lights, flashes, flags everywhere. You know, she just like genuinely wants to understand why that asshole is that asshole. And right. it takes her a week. <laughs> Readers, whatever. Yeah, you know, to, to delve into this complete stranger on social media to figure out why the fuck they said what they said, yeah. where I've already blocked them a week ago. Like, you know what I mean? And so I, and I, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why, who the fuck cares? And she's so sweet. So, like, like listening, like, okay, let me just read you my I wrote before I post it. I just want to read this really quick. And you're like, yes, though, it's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> let it go. But please don't say anything else after this. And then this. delete, right? <laughs> post it and then get out. <laughs> Abort the mission. You know. I spent the first. Hair. <laughs> the first couple of months, I spent the first couple of months of this year really angry and saw by somebody else pointing it out to me just how angry I had gotten. And I had to take a big step back and go, whoa, that's so out of character for me. That's not who I am. And I, I, I think we both have been there at some yeah, point all been this there. year, too. I mean, how could you? And know? with every single one, I had to go, oh my God, who is that person? I was horrified. I had to look in the mirror and see who I was becoming in order to take a big step back and go, wait a minute, that doesn't resonate for me. Right. I believe happiness is living authentically in your own body and skin with a very clear understanding of your own values. Absolutely. And from that point, you can decide if you're happy or if you're angry or sad. Right. And that's that's where it all stems from. If you're expecting somebody else to make you happy. That guy in the kitchen? I don't even like this. Better make her a sandwich, right? Right. <laughs> He's making a salad. That's but that's I don't, you know, we came into this marriage. Here's a good, another great example. We came into this marriage with no expectations. We both came damaged. And we came into this relationship together with, um, I'm not going to dive into this with you until I know who you are. Yeah. And I remember in the very early months, one day I asked him, are you in love with me? He'd already said, I love you. And I said, are you in love with me? And he said, no. Mm. And I went, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) <laughs> and in my head, I'm already in the fight or flight mode. I'm packing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said, I think I was about maybe about two two years in. A, no, six months into it, maybe a year into it. Mm-hmm. And I say, but but you said you love me. <laughs> and he says to me, Jessica, loving somebody and being in love with somebody are two very different things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I believe when you understand who you are, I'm going to be very much in love with you. Oh, that's beautiful. But right now, I just love who you are. Right. So yeah. get it together. <laughs> right. Well, again, that that mo- that only certain people could do that. Some other guy could have said that to you and be like, "You motherfucker!" Yeah, go fuck yourself. Right. 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 But I mean, but again, you know what you're missing. <laughs> right. but yeah but, but again it's, it's just a dynamic something special about somebody else you know that that the other response comes and yeah that when that happens you, you start to not talk back right <laughs> it, matter, it, mattered yeah, little so girl. Yeah, it mattered it mattered so much to me because i was so i was so in love with him but <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm still in love with him. But yeah, it, right. I am. He's amazing. But it, it's it's part of the lessons of relationship in life, and and knowing yourself is so very very important. And sadly, we don't come into that until we're about four or five decades into this journey. For sure, it's a long haul to get here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I, I feel like I'm just getting there and I'm about to be 48 and I feel like I'm kind of 
figuring it out. Like I, I get it. It's up to me whether I want to be an asshole every day or whether I want to be with love and light and see what that brings to my life. Because I yeah, have, and then there's this phenomenon that happens. I've always had that wall and I've always been very guarded. And once you let go of that and, and let light in, I mean, you, you become who you're supposed to be. But that is, if, like you just said, that's a journey. Like that is a journey. That doesn't Yeah, matter. and I'm working on like, I've got the love and the light, and the, the smiles, everything. I'm really working on like having at least two, I don't give a fuck in my pockets. I have a problem with giving the fuck. Yeah. That is a problem. Okay, so, so I like you know. It's not beneficial at all. It's overwhelming, you know, and that it's is not something you need to be happy. Right. <laughs> it's very hard. It's when hard to get there. there. I am very hot tempered. I can go ask him. I can go from zero to 60 just like that. I'm easily triggered because I have roadmaps and stops along the way that when behaviors mimic or match that, I go straight back to that response. I'm the same way, 100%. And then you have to have a conversation with yourself that goes, wait, that's not that, right? Yeah. But we're conditioned to that. When we get to a place in life where we go, okay, wait a minute, that, that doesn't really resonate. That doesn't make me, it doesn't make me feel good to be that angry. I'm right. presently working with a little 25 year old girl. I've taken over this home human resources department right now while I'm helping them build it out and fix some things. And this little 25 year old gal shares an office space with me. We're two days into this relationship. It took us a while to warm up. <laughs> I watch her handle these people that come into her office. They're like, rawr, 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 and she's like, you can totally work with that. How about you step on out there? Oh, yeah. And I don't get that. And I'm like, okay, I really need to work on being that person. Yeah. Because I know that if you step up to my desk and you open up with that kind of attitude, I'm going to match that. You turn the head around. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm going to take out those big hoop earrings. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Very I'm coming for you. Yeah. And I honestly believe that universe, smile. <laughs> universe has put me here because this is the lesson I need to learn. Because this is a tough one for me. I really believe we're put where we're supposed to be put because we're supposed to learn these things. And right now I'm sitting in a chair. I have very mixed drinks about those emotions. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this project right now? And I realize that it's less about the project because I can do that with my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. It's about the lesson I'm learning sitting in the seat. And the lesson I'm supposed to learn is less reactive, <laughs> less triggered yes. under normal circumstances so that I can learn to communicate yeah. in a much happier customer service way that doesn't make you feel like an asshole. <laughs> it make me feel like a fucking rabid bitch. Right. Yeah, you can't, just really, that easy. you can't really play flight attendant for long. No, you know? that's it's either in you or it's not, you know? Right, right? and I believe... Exactly, and like Lois, I believed when I got over 50, because all my friends over 50 told me so, I got to give the fucks away, right? And after 50, you can say whatever the fuck you want, because you earned that right, because you went through the perimenopause. You don't bleed anymore. The crime scenes are over. You've done the time, and now you're free to move about the planet. And the truth is, you're not. No. Well, there was a generation that would have let you done that, but they they don't exist anymore, so right. <laughs> they're gone. Well, I'll cancel you. We were the last. <laughs> we were the last. <laughs> last Mohicans. The last of the Mohicans right here. You can't do that. No. No. <laughs> they never we told you to hit your get in the store, and that started then. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's sad. It's really sad, and everything's yeah. offensive, and that's even sadder. Yeah. Oh man, get some thick yeah, skin. So All right. Well, we have kept you for the last day of your life. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I love this. Are you kidding? <laughs> we love talking with you. So no, all of a sudden, you know, an hour and a half's gone by. Sorry about that. I love you. God, you guys are so. You guys are totally some of my all-time favorite people in this industry, and I think we go oh, all the way back to a certain suppliers' day. But I'm yes. not. I mean, we got to be back seven plus years for sure. For sure. And then I uh, more actively when I got separated. Yes, that's when yes. it really picked back up. Yeah, right. That was so. It was uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah, five years. Yeah, twenty seventeen for sure. And we're still here to talk about it. <laughs> we are. Yeah, and share because we've learned a lot, and people need to grab that, breathe that in. <laughs> yeah, spread the education Come to us. Jessica, thank you so much from the thank bottom you of our hearts. Guys. 
Oh my Thank god, this was so much fun. I get, I hope I get to do it again. Oh, oh, no, we're doing it again. That's sure. right. We couldn't even say it fast sure. enough. We reserve the right to take you anytime we want. Yes, <laughs> anytime. And you heard it here. I can go to Wisconsin. <laughs> yes, if you would just shut the fuck up. <laughs> can you can you see my cat? Hi, Stop ignoring us. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Out of the corner. <laughs> it's like shit. If I have this there, is it? Hey, there he is. Special appearance. Here's what you can't see. You guys are gonna die. Hold on, because you've got to see this. This is the crazy shit in my house. This, right. this. Who, who's cat? Can we see the beach? Can you take us to the beach, please? Because our beach is not our beach. Is not the same. Cat is a vegetable junkie. Oh my god. Why is there pussy on your counter? Because she is a vegetable whore. <laughs> Does she eat animal crackers? We said after. She eats everything. Oh, everything. Oh my god. We can't have nice things because that cat gets into everything. <laughs> oh, we're gonna see the water. We are. We have surprises. Oh my god! There's waves. Look at them. Okay, so so some fun, cool facts in the mornings. Just oh, past that goodness. second rise of waves, that's where the dolphins swim up and down because they're getting fish. They're eating. Oh my gosh. The sun rises here and the sun sets over there. Oh my God. How incredible, <sighs> Jessica. It's beautiful. The, I don't know what And this is the life I earned. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jess, we're, we're doing something yeah, wrong in our life. We really are. We got us some major life lessons to learn. Thank you for sharing. Um, we gotta get rid of some kids. <laughs> yes, oh and God, some of the Midwest. Midwest, Midwest got to go. Yeah, the kids I, they got their own legs now. So, right, it was, <laughs> kind of. I never imagined we'd be living this life. This is where my people go to die. They don't actually come here to live. <laughs> <laughs> and you went there to live. Good for you. And I came here to live. I figured I should get to know before I die. Right. I love it. We well, love you. Thank, thank you for you. the tour and thank you for the real beach. I'm sorry, ours didn't quite cut it. Yeah, you're like just staring at us like poor bitches. Yeah. Poor bitches. We have an amazing guest suite. It does have a bathroom on it. You're always welcome. The door is always oh, open at the Hemp and Catrice's house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank again you. for your time. Have an amazing night. Thank you. Thank you guys. 420. And 420. It's 420. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chica. Much Bye. love. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you next time. Oh, that was so fun. I can't believe we stopped for an hour and a half. Guys, yeah. sorry about that. I mean, you yeah. know, most of you aren't going to listen to all that, so we're not that sorry. But yeah, that was a really good time. Should, though, because, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, outside of, you know, just getting to know her better, which is really cool. We didn't know a lot of that. But yeah. she's so knowledgeable. I mean, she yeah. really... When it comes to compliance, guys, she's it. She's it. So if there's any questions, yeah. please let us know. Reach out. We're here. Yeah, she even has it. You know, it's it's compliance and ethics. These are two core. They qualities. should go together. Right in business and especially in the cannabis business. Yes. Well, so, thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank hour. you again. Another happy hour. Whether you are watching <laughs> or listening, we appreciate your time, and we will see you next week. Next One week. love. One love. <laughs>